So why did I steal my son's Legos and come out to the backyard? Well, it's because I want to teach you about bit depth and about sampling in digital X-ray imaging. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowardyAlgeWorks.com. We have bite-sized content about X-ray and CT. And if that sounds good to you, especially if you're a radiologic technologist, click below and subscribe and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. And again, what we're talking about today is we're gonna go through an analogy. I have a mini ladder and I have Chewbacca, a little Chewy here. And I wanna measure these two and see how tall they are. And then we're gonna circle back to see how that relates to X-ray imaging. So imagine I start with I go to my son, he's the boss in this scenario because he's got the lat, he's got all the Legos. And I say, can you spare a Lego? And he says, sure, but I can only spare one Lego. So this is gonna be a pretty cheap measurement system. So he gives me the extra large Lego. So I take the extra large Lego and I go to the ladder and I say, is this Lego bigger than the ladder? The answer is yes, the Lego is bigger than the ladder. And I take Chewbacca and I want to measure Chewbacca. I say, is this Lego bigger than Chewbacca? I say, yes. So if my measurement system is only this one big Lego in terms of how tall these objects are, I can at least tell that I have two objects here. I can tell they have some height, but I can't tell these two apart. They look the same to me in terms of a system which is only measuring with this one big Lego. So they're both one extra large Lego unit tall. Both Chewbacca and the ladder are one extra large Lego unit tall. So I say, son, can you spare me another two or three Legos? So he says, sure, I'm feeling generous today. So I'll give you these. So he gives me these. These are what we're gonna call the large Legos. So I take Chewbacca, I got Chewy, and I take the large Legos. And I say, is Chewy larger or smaller than one large Lego? Chewy is actually just a little bit larger, a little bit taller than a large Lego. So I take two. So Chewy is two large Legos tall. Okay, so I now know in the units of large Legos, Chewy's two. Is the ladder larger than two? The answer is yes. So the ladder is three large Legos tall. So now I got better sampling now because I have smaller units to make the measurement in. These large Legos are smaller than this extra large Lego. So now with these large Legos, I can now tell apart the difference between the height of Chewbacca and the height of the ladder. Now I can tell I'm on the right track. So I say, Bryce, can I have another few Legos. Sure, feeling generous again. So we got now the medium Legos. So if I take the medium Legos and I take Chewbacca, I can bring Chewbacca up. Let's see, is Chewbacca taller than two? The answer is yes. Is Chewbacca taller than three? Let's see now, Chewbacca is three of these units tall. And then if I compare that to the ladder, let's see, the ladder is one, two, three, four, five of these medium Lego units tall. So now you can see we're starting to be able to differentiate them more, three units versus five units. So we can now tell even more apart between Chewbacca and the ladder. And then I have my small Lego units here. So if I take my small Lego units, which I had to you know, steal covertly because I wasn't gonna be able to get those from the boss. If I take these small Lego units, I can see how many, one, two, three, four, five. Chewbacca would be five units tall here. And then the ladder in the small units would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units tall. So we're talking about being able to differentiate even better between the height of Chewbacca and between the ladder. So what we've done is we've increased the number of sampling units that we had in order to make this measurement. So in each case, our sampling unit got smaller. 
going from the extra large to the large to the medium and then finally to the small Lego units. That's the same thing that we can do if we increase what's called the bit depth or the number of samples that we have. So if, if we have a digital system, what's actually happening in our digital system is we have an analog electric signal that's coming in and we need to convert that signal to a number. So on an X-ray system, that signal on a digital X-ray system is gonna be related to the energy that's deposited in the X-ray detector. So we have an analog electric signal and we need to convert it to a number. So in order to convert that to a number, we're doing this same task of comparing our unit of measurement to the X-ray energy. So in the case of this measurement, we were trying to measure the height of the ladder. In the case of a digital X-ray sensor, you're essentially looking at the energy deposited and then with that energy deposited, you're going to be able to have measurements that are related to the attenuation of the x-rays. Likewise, you can use that in CT, take those attenuation measurements in the projection domain to make an image. So you can make that image, which is actually a map of the attenuation coefficients. So again, that's the relation between what we're talking about in terms of the actual measurements here that we're making. And we have another factor that's important to know is that in these systems, if you're talking about all the things that control the system, it's actually both the number of measurements that we have and then the range of measurements that we can cover. So the range of measurements that we can cover, if I have what I was calling my medium and my small Lego set, and I have in this case, I have two measurements that I can have. In this case, I have four total measurements that I can have. And so, but these would both be measuring something that's the same height. And that total height that we can measure, that total height is called the dynamic range of the system that we can measure. So again, in terms of height, it looks like with that total height, we couldn't measure all of Chewbacca. Chewbacca would what we call saturate the system because he's taller than that range and the latter would definitely saturate the system. So now you can see that we need to be able to have enough measurement range that we can cover what we expect to see clinically in terms of the x-ray measurements or in this case we're just talking about in terms of the height of the thing that we're going to measure. So if all of our objects were always a lot like Chewbacca, I could design a system for something that was a lot like Chewbacca. So for instance, in mammography, we're talking about data where a lot of the time, the measurements are pretty similar. And if we're talking about a general purpose X-ray system, the dynamic range is actually going to be larger of the types of things that you're going to see because you're going to be seeing bone in the path, you're going to be seeing air in the path. So depending on your use case, you can design a system which is going to be ideal. And depending on how general that system needs to be, that will determine the trade-off in that system between what we call the dynamic range, which is the lowest to the highest energy that you're going to be able to represent completely or faithfully if you're not representing it faithfully, it's what's called saturated. So with this small system, if I only have this range of measurements, both the ladder and Chewbacca are going to be what we call saturated. So in general, you can now appreciate that there's trade-offs when you're making these kind of systems in terms of the cost of the system and also in terms of what type of imaging you're going to be doing. So in general, you're going to want more samples and you're going to want a larger dynamic range. But you're trading those two things off. So if you are able to say, I'm going to have a smaller dynamic range that I need to support, then you potentially can have finer sampling over that same dynamic range. So again, I'm Brian Nett. If you found this interesting, 
I think you should click on the next video that we have. That one's gonna be about the detector definitions and the detector definitions on a flat panel matrix. We're talking about what is a DEL, what is the active area, what's the matrix size, sampling frequency, those types of important things. Click on that one coming up.